Hey guys, we're back with another 2D and 3D workflow using both Blender and Clip Studio Paint. In this video, we'll go over how to create a comic strip in Clip Studio Paint using a new 3D tool which allows you to import shape keys from Blender. In addition, we'll cover how to create a couple of variations of a model in Blender using shape keys and how shape keys can take your model to the next level when used in Clip Studio Paint. All right, let's get started. All right, so what exactly are we creating in Blender and what are shape keys useful for? For this comic, we wanted to create a device that would start out closed and open up when twisting the end caps. The user discovers that by continuing to twist the end caps, shapes start emerging from the cylinder in the middle, creating a key combination. She keeps twisting it until she finds the right combination and inserts it into the door, finally unlocking it. Now, why would we want to use shape keys when we have the option to rig and animate objects? Well, shape keys is a way of animating, but what sets it apart is the fact that you don't need any technical rigging or animation knowledge. It's a lot simpler than that and you can do some really interesting things that wouldn't be possible with rigging. With the help of a slider, you can go from this to this and there are no limits to how you can change the shape or structure of the original model as the possibilities are endless. And the best part? It's all contained within the same model, so this is a very non-destructive workflow. I won't go into how to create the model in full detail, so if you're interested in that, visit our channel Polycosm for a video explaining the full modeling process. I will, however, talk about how to create the different shape key states. For our first state, I headed over to the data tab and under shape keys, I clicked the plus button to add the first state as I want the model to start out closed. This will save the model's information, shape and location. Since I want a version of it to be open, I need to create a second shape key and in edit mode, I just move the two parts apart. Note that I have a mirror modifier on to make the model symmetrical. Once I am happy with the location, I exited edit mode, and this might be a bit confusing. Wait, why did the model close again? So that's because only our original key state is activated. If you actually slide key one from zero to one, we can see that transition happen from closed to open. I can now start working on the inner cylinder using shift A to add it in. Note that it is not part of the original mesh, and that is because I later add a modifier to the cylinder for a stylized look and didn't want it affecting the original mesh. Once I am happy with the size, I merge it with the original model, selecting it first, then the original model and pressing Ctrl J. Our shape keys are still there, but since we haven't added a collapsed state to the cylinder itself, it will remain static. So to fix that, we can select the original closed state and in edit mode, we can scale it down until it's not visible. Now this works perfectly, but we also need to add in the scaled up version. There we go. I'll skip over how to create the model with extruded shapes, but head over to Polycosm if you're interested in seeing that process. Okay, with our new model, we can join it with the original mesh and repeat the steps we did for state number two. Something to note is whenever you create a new shape key after you've created a bunch of shape keys and you want to copy those attributes over to a new key, all you need to do is hit the down arrow and press new shape from mix. And this is what the new key would look like. In the end, we get something like this. All right, all we have to do is just export it to Clip Studio Paint as an FBX and Omerjohn will explain the rest. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate how you might use the 3D object with the shape keys applied during the sketching phase. As you can see, I have a rough layout for the page that I'm going to work on. In the layout stage, Everything is drawn very quickly and roughly, so I can focus on the overall page design and the flow of the story without getting distracted by making a good drawing. I mean things like getting the anatomy and proportions correctly, an accurate perspective and things like that. 
At this stage, don't worry about any of that. Just focus on readability. Do the panels flow from one into another clearly? Does the overall page composition work? You should be answering questions like that first. For this whole process, I have used the real pencil and lighter pencil tools and not much else. I don't have any concept art made or anything like that, so I'll be designing the character's look on the fly as well. For the drawing phase, one other tool I tend to use is the Direct Draw subtool. In this case, it helps me block in accurate elliptical shapes. Although I will use that mostly as a guide and will go over it freehand, because I don't like the crisp and perfect look of it for the final art. I feel like overusing tools like that can strip away the personality of your drawing a bit. Alright, let's bring in our 3D object to use as a reference here. In this case, we'll be bringing in our 3D object to help with the perspective and how this artifact our characters interacting with moves and changes. To do this, we go to File, Import, 3D Data. Select the 3D object you want to bring in and click Open. Now we can use the camera tools and the movement tools above the 3D object to move it around on our page and match it to the rough sketch as closely as possible. Right over here in the Tool Property window, we can adjust the light source to suit our needs best. I'm also going to turn off the Cast Shadow by unticking the box next to Cast Shadows on Ground, underneath Applied Light Source. Then, I create a new layer, make a selection with Marquee Subtool over the 3D reference and fill that with white or just off-white color. Then I drop the opacity on this layer down. This is basically my way of digitally putting tracing paper over the reference so it's easier to see my drawing. Now, on another new layer on top, I can start drawing the artifact in. We kept the 3D object simple intentionally so you can add any further detail and texturing in this stage. When you need to move your 3D object again, select the operation tool and make sure the object subtool is selected. Now you can click on your 3D object and interact with it again. Use the movement tools right above your object to reposition it. Then you can select your tracing paper layer and move it back over your reference. Then just keep sketching over. We are going to be rinsing and repeating these steps until we are done. But of course, let's not forget about shape keys, the main topic of this video. When you have your 3D object selected, if you scroll down in your Tool Property window, you will see the Shape Keys button in the Shape section. When you click on this, the adjustment sliders will pop up. Now you can manipulate these to get the desired look on your object. What we are using it here for is, of course, one of many different applications. And again, don't feel constrained by the 3D object. It's meant to be a guide for your drawing. Feel free to add to it, subtract or exaggerate parts of it to suit your purposes. In our case, this is helping me with the perspective and proportions of the artifact within each panel. It's saving me a lot of time when it comes to getting the correct angles. I don't think this is a substitute for an understanding of perspective. You still need to know the basics to be able to use these tools correctly. This is, however, a reliable way of saving time on redrawing the same structure over and over again. I'm getting close to calling the sketch phase done. If I were to pass this on to another artist for inking, it would need more refinement, but since we won't be doing that here, it's up to me to decide when it's done. One other tool I ended up using for this was the straight line ruler under figure subtool. It's your typical straight ruler to help you draw, well, straight lines. You can use this as a visual guide, or you can have your brush snap to it. For the latter option, with your brush selected, click on this wrench icon to show the subtool detail palette. Select Correction and tick the box next to Enable Snapping. Now your brush will snap to the closest ruler you've drawn and follow along it. Once again, I prefer to use these as a guide and try to avoid completely straight lines. But in some cases, of course, you might need some crisp and straight lines. And this is the tool for that. Alright, are you guys ready to see the final page?
So to summarize, Shape Keys is an incredibly powerful and easy tool to use, and you can create some really interesting models which can help aid the process of any Clip Studio Paint users. You barely need any knowledge of Blender, and just look at how cool this final comic strip ended up being. Hope this was useful, and as always, if you want to see more 2D and 3D workflow videos, check out our channel Polycosm. Thanks for watching. Bye! Clip Studio Paint